What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Homie Hangout, where we help others move in excellence. And today is probably one of the more dramatic videos that I've uh, shared regarding my own prison experience. As many of you know, I tend to do one video about every institution that I've been in. I have not ran through that list yet because I also like to produce other content, uh, but I'm getting there. And so this is all regarding Salinas Valley State Prison on a yard uh, around 2000. And it's a number of removals, uh, a number of people taken off the yard with a weapon that happened within like a one month span, I wanna say. And so there's politics involved, there's violence involved, um, you name it, right? I would hope what folks walk away from this is not just an entertaining war story, although I think that's the element of it, but, and not just, oh, prison can be violent, uh, even though prison can be violent, the one predictable thing about prison is that it's unpredictable, but I also think that there's lessons in here that folks can take with them, whether they're incarcerated or they are gonna be incarcerated or or they're in the streets and, and they've never hit prison. And so with that said, let's go. To set the stage, um, I was in ADSEG, I was in administrative segregation in Salinas Valley. I had come off of B Yard uh, for reasons that I'll explain in a future video. Uh, I don't wanna get sidetracked. And I was getting released to A Yard. A Yard is a, is, uh, was a solid yard in terms of the Northerners, right? And all of these removals, all of these incidents uh, involve Norteños, Northerners um, only, right? And so I came out of the hole and I came with instructions. And my instructions were to observe what was happening on that yard, to tap in with the leader of that yard, whose name was Casper from San Jose, and kind of get a feel for how he was operating and wait for this individual named Gangster, who I was in ADSEG with. I hadn't known him prior to this, but um, who I was in ADSEG with, I believe he was there because he got caught with some drugs, who was also going to be released to a yard very soon and to wait for him and he would come with further instruction, right? So sure enough, maybe like a week goes by. So first of all, I get out to the yard, right? I, I get transferred to a yard. Um, I get a celly right away, uh, an individual from, from Salinas, um, good guy. And so the normal process is you have to get cleared, right? You have to get cleared internally. And so generally when you're first available to go to yard, you have escorts, right? You come out to the yard and some other Norteños kind of pick you up, so to speak, or walk with you. And you get escorted to a part of the yard where you stay, basically. You're not allowed to roam around freely. You're not allowed to engage with people. And you have these two people with you, A, to, to keep an eye on you, but also because if it turns out that you're not welcome on that yard, then those individuals are there to, to potentially remove you and also, if you seek to cause harm to other fellas on the yard, they can stop that, right? So that's the normal process. And to get cleared can take days or weeks. It, it all depends on a variety of factors. So the first thing that was odd for me is I was cleared when I first came out to the yard, right? Um, I, I never got picked up by security. And I sort of wondered about that. And I found out later is because there was an individual named Nightmare from Modesto who I was in a prison with uh, before. Him and I were in Solano together. And so he, uh, he was aware of my status. He was aware of my character. He was aware of how I got down. And, um, and, and apparently when he heard that I was there, he had some seniority on that yard. Um, when he heard that I was there, he was like, nah, man, that's rascal, he's cool. Personally, I would not have cleared somebody that fast because I hadn't seen him in about a year. And we hadn't been in communication. And I've watched individuals radically change their values, their priorities, their character uh, in a matter of hours, right? Let alone uh, a year. But nonetheless, I was clear. And one of the first people I meet on the yard is Casper from San Jose. And so I'm kind of watching. He's an authority figure on the yard. He he has the keys, right? And uh, you know, so so he's in charge. There's only a handful of northerners on the yard, even though it's Salinas Valley. And some people would think like, oh, there must be a bunch of Norteños there because the city of Salinas and the county of Monterey County is, is a Norteño stronghold. Salinas Valley saw many more buses from Southern California than they did Northern California. And so there was approximately 200 Southsiders on that yard. And I believe there was like 12, less than 15 uh, Northerners for sure, Norteños for sure. 
And but that being said, it was a very respectful environment. I've touched on that a little bit before uh, in other videos. And so, uh, so there's not a lot of fellas. I, I meet them all, and I'm walking the track with Casper, and and he's very open, right? He he's not suspicious of me. He's excited that I'm there, and and he is like, man, I need help. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? And and he's kind of feeling me out but he's also sort of like a sigh of relief, you know, of, of man, I, I need help here, which I thought was a little bit odd. And, and I was trying to maintain low key. So it's not as if I was interrogating other Norteños about him. So anyways, gangster comes out, gangster gets at me and he's like, Hey, rascal, uh, I have to remove meaning gangster talking about himself. I'm be given orders. And he showed me the, the kite, right? I've been given orders to remove Casper with a weapon because he's wanted back in the hole. And I had heard that when I was in the hole, that the fellas had been trying to get him back there, had been sending word to the yard, and it was just falling on deaf ears. He was never coming back. And in those situations, sometimes when you're wanted back in the hole, your best bet is to do something to go back to the hole, rather than wait for somebody to come out and get you, so to speak, right? Casper apparently didn't, didn't want to do that. And so, uh, so I wasn't surprised that that he had to go. I don't know the full details of, of what he had done wrong. I, I didn't really care. It wasn't my business. And so I tell him, cool. So gangster's like, I'm going to stab him. I'm going to use a pedazo, right? I don't want a razor. I'm, I'm going to book him. I said, okay, cool. We can facilitate that, right? So I get him a piece. And gangster's a very cocky individual, right? He, he's very flamboyant. He thinks he's the man. And he wants the world to know that he is the man. Um, and, and gangsters career comes to an end, uh, uh, within this video. So, so stay tuned, but, uh, I said, cool, right? Here's, here's a pill. I'll make it happen. Captain, you know? Um, and I said, I'll, I'll have your back. I'll clean it up if necessary. Right. Because I didn't want to involve other people in the yard because I didn't know their allegiances and, and whatnot. And I didn't want to give Casper a heads up that he was going to get poked. And so we're out at yard, gangster has a pelazo, um, and, and, you know, we had made it. I gave it to him. Uh, Marcelli was in the loop. He was a sharp individual, and, and he didn't really care for Casper, and he didn't really care what was going on because he was going home. And so, uh, so anyways, Casper's on track. He has a pelazo. It's, it's a sunny day, right? It's a sunny time in Salinas. And he jogs by Casper two, three times. And, and he's like, man, I, the tower cop is looking at me. The tower cop recognizes me from when I was here before. And mind you, Casper knows Gangster from when Gangster was on a yard previously as well. So Casper is far less comfortable with Gangster than he is with me, right? He's, he's kind of on his toes when it comes to him. He's suspicious of him. And Gangster's not very good at being discreet, right? So, so he's keeping Casper at a distance and it's kind of like, hey, bro, I don't want nothing to do with you which is not the way you should be if you're planning on stabbing somebody, right? Um, so anyways, he, he comes up with an excuse. The tower cop sees me. I can't do it right now. I said, okay, cool, man. We'll, we'll revisit this tomorrow, right? So it comes out the next day. Supposedly, he has the piece. I don't even know for sure, looking back, whether he had it or not, but he says he did. And again, man, I, the SEALs are watching me because they know about me. And, and in his mind, he was a very high-powered individual. Um, he was quick to tell people that he was tapped in with C's, right? With Canales, uh, Nuestra Familia members. This is long, long before NF members were out in the general population and, and nobody quite knew exactly what he was talking about. Um, but, you know, he was kind of cagey. I came to find out later what had happened and, uh, and that also wasn't good for him. But so nonetheless, for like two days, he doesn't bust a grape, right? And now Casper is getting suspicious. You know what I mean? Casper is wondering, hey, what's going on? And I notice when I'm talking to Casper, he has kind of chipmunk cheeks. And I'm still walking the track with them. I'm kicking it with them, right? And, um, and I got to be close to him for when, you know, gangster books him, right? And he had a flat back. He had a razor in his mouth. And he showed me. He's like, hey, fool, I don't, I don't trust this dude, bro. I don't trust this dude. Now, I could tell that Casper wasn't the type of person that was actually going to use a weapon against somebody, um, but, but he was scared. And a scared person backed in a corner 
can really surprise you in terms of how they react. So I'm like, this has to end, bro. Like, like, not only do I run the risk of being in trouble because I got word from the whole that this needs to happen, but also Casper is now becoming a security threat, right? So I tell Gangster, here's a tomahawk, right? Here's, here's, you know, some razors, melt it into a little handle, you know, to make it more convenient. Just cut the dude. You know, nobody said he had to be poked, right? Just, just cut him and get him off the yard. Gangster still flakes, right? And, and so we're at morning yard and he's coming up with excuses and excuses. And I'm like, this dude. So I, uh, I'm, I'm in my, so actually in those couple of days, I had, I had changed cells. I had moved cells and I was living with this dude, Chivo, right? And Chivo is, is a youngster. Uh, he's not super educated, but he's a, a willing torpedo, right? He came from, I think Pleasant Valley or, you know, one of those yards where it was rocking. It was rocking with the Bulldogs. It was rocking with the Southsiders. Um, and, and so he was very used to combat, right? And, and was all for it. He was itching for it. Um, he actually had F Bulldogs spelled out on, on the back of his head. Shout out Bulldogs. I'm, I'm not on here trying to set trip. I'm just saying that to show his mindset, right? He, he was a wild one. And so I'm venting to him like, man, look, which I shouldn't have technically done, but I was like, look, man, this fool's supposed to whack this cat and, and ain't busting a grape. And he's like, I'll whack him. I said, don't let your mouth write a check you can't cash, bro. You know what I mean? And he's like, nah, fool, come out after lunch. And, and I got him, just, you know, have my back and, and it's a wrap. Bring him to the bar work. I said, you know what? Fine. Fine, I'll do that. So, so I bring him over there by the bar work. Salinas Valley has, has one handball court, right? One, one handball wall. And then there's the bar work right there and the basketball court. It's all very close to each other. Um, and so, and, and obviously, you know, the South Siders use half of the handball court, half the basketball court and, and a chunk of the bar work, right? Everything is still split evenly, even though the numbers are so lopsided. So I'm sitting there chopping it up with Casper. Um, he has his back to the handball wall and the handball court and, kind of the rest of the yard, right? He's facing the South Siders table and, and the basketball court and whatnot. So I'm sitting there talking to him and I see Chivo come up behind him and Chivo palm prints the side of his head from behind, palm prints him, takes the razor and yokes him slowly all the way down on his chin. And I'm watching gangster like, I mean, uh, uh, Casper like, and it, like nails on a chalkboard that, like when you hear that sound, that's what he looked like. Like, and, and I'm not gonna lie, I chuckled, right? I, I chuckled. My mindset was different back then. I was in a different lifestyle, and and I found it pretty amusing. The look on his face struck me as pretty amusing. And so, uh, so Chivo takes his hand away, and Casper goes to run. And as he goes to run, I fire on him, and I hit him once and split open where where he was cut at, right. This is the fine line. It's a cut with a razor, right? So you punch it and it opens up. And, and he kind of turns and he jogs through the basketball court, through the side of the basketball court where the Sureños in the woods play. And I'm like, oh, shit, right? Because if he interacts with them, if the yard goes down at that moment, whatever, and they wind up losing people to the ad seg, then we're going to have a, a conflict, right? Our groups are going to get off because our activities have impacted them and, and, and they shouldn't. And so, uh, so I kind of chase him a little bit, but he runs to the nurse's door in the center complex. So there's a long wall in the yard. There's a door to the kitchen. There's a door to the nurse's office, a, a door to, to the administrative offices. If you go down the way, there's a door for canteen, blah, blah, blah. So he runs to the nurse's thing and he's banging, screaming, help, help, help. And he's looking up at the tower, right? So I backed out. Okay, he's cool. He's done, right? Um, and and they came out and got him and and rolled him up, and that was it. Um, nobody got picked up for for the slicing. This was so many years ago that that even if there's cops watching this, can nobody be in trouble, right? Um, and so there you go. Casper's gone. And as I'm there, and they're they're doing yard recall, group by group, building by building. And so I'm sitting on the ground, right? 
or laid out actually in Selena's, you always had to lay out. You couldn't just squat. So I'm laid out on the ground waiting and gangster walks by me, right? You, you're not escorted one by one. They announce, you know, Hey, all from this building, let's go. And so he's walking by me and he goes, Hey, Rask, I got the next two. I got the next two, bro. And I said, okay. And there was multiple witnesses to that, right? Multiple Nortenos are there. And I said, okay, fine. Because he knows he's in trouble for not removing Casper. And there's no wheelie, there's no kite, there's no message going back to AdSeg because we didn't lose anybody to go to the hole. The only one we lost was him, was Casper. Obviously, he doesn't have a kite. And so I said, okay, fine. That's good. There's bound to be more people, right? And so, um, and mind you, this is my first time on a, a solidly functioning, if you will, like a programming yard, level four yard for Norteños. The yard I was on previously was a general population yard, but the Norteño collective there was, was wishy-washy to say the least. And, and I'll save that for another video. But so I said, okay, fine, right? And, and we go back to ourselves and we come out, you know, we were never in lockdown. We come out the next day like normal. And um, gangster, I mean, uh, uh, Casper obviously didn't tell. Nobody gets locked up for it. And uh, within a, like a few days, uh, this Christian dude drives up from San Jose. And this is the removal. When I think about the removals in prison, those that I've participated in, those that I've authorized, those that I was aware of ahead of time, um, this is the one that sits with me sort of the most in, in terms of regret, right? Uh, so this dude pulls up, he's labeled as a Norteño, he's from San Jose, and he moves in with, with another Northerner, right, another Norteño, and he says, I'm a Christian. Now, when I was in a level three, there was a Christian car, right? There was a group of people of different races and, and different geographies but they all identified as Christian. They kind of kicked it together and, and they were allowed to do so, assuming that they didn't get into stuff that impacted what prison gangs and, and stuff were doing. Salinas didn't have that. Uh, uh, there was no Christian car, right? Uh, there was a Muslim car, but that, that's a different, you know, that operates differently. And so I was like, huh, I wasn't exactly sure, to be honest, how to deal with it, right? I wasn't eager to, to harm the guy. I was like, well, you know, let's see how he programs, right? And, and, and as long as he kind of goes along with the program and, and whatnot, and, you know, we'll see, right? His paperwork was not bad. You know, I, I don't remember what he was there for, but, but nothing in his paperwork came back as faulty. And so uh, he was just a Christian. But when he filled out his questionnaire, right? So, so we have a new arrival questionnaire where we ask a series of questions. When he filled that out, he wrote in kind of tagger style writing, you know, um, graffiti style writing to a degree. Um, it, it's a style that you actually see in Southern California more. Like if you see graffiti in Southern California and, and um, you know, it's not block letters or, or, or whatever, it, it's, it's handwriting, but, but it has a distinct style to it. That's how he wrote. I didn't really think too much of it. But when Gangster saw it, he's like, hey, that fool writes like a gangster, bro. I, I think he's lying. I think he's undercover. I think he's this. I was like, we have no reason to think that stuff, right? It's, he writes how he writes. Now, at the time, I'm a full-fledged, full-believing, righteous, striving, blah, 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 uh, uh, member of, of this movement, right? And, and so faith and religion and all that stuff, I could care less, right? My religion was, was the movement, was the cause. And so I did think it was a little weird. I was like, I don't think Christians should write like that, but you know, whatever, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. And then uh, a couple of days later, maybe the next day, whatever, a week, something like that. He, his celly, no, not even a week, he wasn't there long. His celly comes out and says uh, that, that, that Christian dude from Sanho was kind of preaching to him. Right. And, and that came on grilling from gangster. Gangster wants to know everything about this dude. What does he say? What does he do? How's he acting in a cell? This and that. And, uh, and he's like, nah, you know, he told me like, there ain't no real future in this life, man. And, and you know, that God loves me. 
you know, and, and whatnot. And Gang's like, that's it, he's gotta go, he's poisoned. And I'm like, I don't know, right? But I'm keeping in mind that Gangster has the next two pegadas, right? The next two removals are him. And he had puckered up so much on Casper. To be honest, I was like, cool, go for it. And it wasn't because I really felt the Christian guy was a threat. I, I hadn't reached that conclusion. Maybe I would have later, but at that point I hadn't. But it was more about Gangster. I want to see Gangster whack somebody, right? And that's sad looking back. Obviously, my mindset is different. Um, and, and so this dude fell, uh, more because I wanted to see gangster act than I wanted to see him leave the yard. Right. And that happens in prison. You know, it, it sometimes people get hurt because the one that's doing the hurting is being tested and, and they're just a pawn in the game. Right, like ah, you're kind of on thin ice. You can go either way, but this guy owes cleanup. So, yeah, you can go. And and so it's it's rough, man, because you're talking about human beings. You're talking about people with families, right? So gangster goes with a razor. The whole idea of him using a piece is is out the window. So he goes with a razor. He jogs on a track, and uh, and he cuts him. Now Christian dude is walking with with somebody else, right? Um, not a Northern, not Northern, like somebody from another group segment. Um, I think it was like a white dude who was a Christian, right? Again, there's no Christian car, but he found another Bible dude, I guess. So they're walking and, uh, and, and gangster jog, jogs by him, cuts him and goes. When I say cuts him, I mean like maybe that big, just a little scratch really on, on the side of his neck to the point that Christian dude don't skip a beat. He's like, and he stands there and talks to the other Christian dude that he's with on the track for a minute. You know, they, they chop it up for a little bit. I can imagine a dude's asking him like, Hey fool, what the fuck was that about? Ah, oh, well, you know, I don't know. Okay. You know, I, maybe they prayed. I don't know what they did, but then he walks up to, uh, a seal that's stationed by a building just standing outside kind of watching what's going on, but missed that. And he just walks up to me and shows him, hey. And the seal's like, and presses his alarm, yard down. So the most unspectacular slicing in, in that I've ever observed in, well, I shouldn't say that, um, but pretty close to the most unspectacular slicing that I ever saw in prison. And, and it's odd to be on that yard because it was a particularly violent yard. And so, and odd because in my mind, gangster has something to prove. If I was in his shoes, I would have felt like I had something to prove. And I'm going to demonstrate that when I talk about the person that I whacked in just a minute. And so, um, so anyways, I'm like, okay, it counts. It counts, right? Um, but you scratched the Christian. You know, in, in the grand scheme of things, he ain't really done. Like, the dude don't even identify as a gang. They don't even rock with us. Um, and so we said, okay, fine. And Gans is like, oh. you know, big macho dude. And kind of find out he'd been talking to some of the Africanos, right, some of the Blacks. We had a good relationship with some of them on the yard. We didn't have a bad relationship with any, but, but some of us had really good relationships with, with certain individuals and certain groups. And so uh, he was going around and he was telling people that he had the keys to the yard, that he was running the yard, that uh, he was operating within the NF. I don't know the exact details. I don't know if he said he was an NF member or, or what. Um, these are things that I found out after. But, uh, but I did see him hanging around with pockets of people, right? And, and so, uh, and, and he was full of himself, man. He's just full of himself. There's no other way to put it. So some time goes by, not long. Like I said, all of this happened within maybe the span of a month. And we go to chow. We go to dinner. And this individual sits at the table with us. And he's a big guy, right? Big, not like big, muscular, but just kind of big, not sloppy. He got a big head, I remember. And, and he's bald and he's got kind of like, you know, he looks like a Sharpe, right? Those little wrinkly dogs. 
And so he's sitting at the table with us. And he's kind of J-cat, right? He's, he's, he's not all there. But there was no what they call triple CMS, right? There was no people on that yard that I'm aware of that were designated. Uh, how can I put it? This, that was not a prison where people designated as needing hot meds, psychotropic medication, meds that your body could react to negatively if you're outside in too much heat. They have prisons that have buildings that are for those kinds of guys. That yard didn't have a building for them. And to the best of my knowledge, nobody there really fell within that classification, which didn't mean nobody was a J-cat, just nobody was classified as a J-cat taking meds for it. So this dude comes and sits, and he's kind of looking at his tray. He's eating more slow. And, and I think there's four of us at the table, if I remember how tables are set up. And uh, so we're like, what's up, man? What, what you here for, right? Uh, and he was labeled as a Northern. And so uh, homeboy from his building was there too. And, and was like, nah, bro, he's, you know, he's labeled as a homeboy. What's up, man? What's your name? You know, da, da, da. And he just, he was very not talkative. And he goes, oh, I did something very bad. Very, very bad. And we're like, what well, kind of bad? You know, we all done something bad. That's why we're here, man. What uh, What's going on? I can't say. I can't say it is very bad. I did something. And now you're starting to get like Tomo kind of vibes, right? Like maybe this dude's in here for an unmentionable offense. And, and, and I don't, not to be stereotypical, but for those that have done time, I, I think you would relate to this. Them cats have a look to them, it seems, right? Uh, uh, even if you just watch TV and see what people are arrested for, it seems that those types of individuals have a kind of look or a demeanor to them. And so it's very judgmental, but he struck me and the other folks at the table as he probably one of those guys, right? And his actions, his response did not help alleviate our concerns, right? Didn't make us feel any better about who he was. And so I told him, but you better get his paperwork. You know what I mean? Can't get his paperwork. Dude is just like in his own. He, he, I did something bad. You got any paperwork? And homeboy said he came back and dude was like, he doesn't have anything. He doesn't have any paperwork. He doesn't even know what he's talking about. He's just zoned out and he lives in a cell by himself. And I'm like, come on, man. So the consensus, right? I had a conversation with a couple other people. The, the way it was set up there is if somebody had the keys to the yard, but decisions weren't made in a vacuum. It, it was not a... a it wasn't a dictatorship environment. That doesn't mean everybody was included, but there was three of us all together who kind of, uh, you know, were, were, were the head for, for that yard, right? And, and the chain of command and the terminology and stuff has, has changed. Um, and and there were, it was going through some changes in which there was some misinformation on a lot of the main lines as to how the command structure was supposed to be set up. But again, that's another story. That's how we were doing in Salinas. We were doing the best that we knew how. Um, I, I like the idea of having other informed people's input uh, because maybe I don't always know what's right. And, 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 you know, I like to bounce ideas off of people. So anyways, the consensus is this fool got to go, right? Um, and, and Gangster was a part of those conversations for the most part. And so uh, from the moment he came on the yard. And so we said, okay. And the dude would come to the yard, right? The, the, the weirdo, right? Let's just call him the weirdo. The weirdo would come to the yard. And so I told gangster, hey, bro, that's you. <laughs> that's all you. Have fun with that. Nah, bro, I already did mine. I already did mine, huh? You said you got the, last, the next two. All you did was scratch old boy. Like, you got another one coming. Run it. Nah, nah, I ain't doing it, right? I ain't doing it. Nah, bro, you ain't gonna play me like that. Nah, I cleaned it up. I did mine. And I'm like, you were supposed to hit the dude that has the keys to the yard. And you puckered up on that. So my celly does it just at, for shits and giggles. And now you scratch this cat and you think that's rep. You're the one that offered up you got the next two. I didn't tell you. You said I got the next two. And again, be careful what you say in prison. Be careful what you commit to. 
be careful what you say out of passion, out of anger, out of excitement, because those checks will get cast, right? And, um, and that's all I was doing, right? I wasn't trying to be oppressive or, or anything else. I'm just trying to hold you to what you said was the resolution to a clear flaw that you had. Want to be a jerk? Could have just whacked him then and got him off the yard for failing to do what he was assigned to do by the homies in EdSec. But I didn't. And so, uh, but he argues, nah, man, I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. And we're having this vocal argument in the grass on the yard where this dude's maybe 100 yards away sitting in the grass, just, you know, probably 50 feet off the track, just kind of sitting there, Indian style, right, with his legs crossed, just zoning into nowhere, right? And, um, and so we're arguing, and, and there's a couple other homeboys there, right? Um, we, we weren't ever allowed to be in groups more than three uh, just because our numbers were too small. Um, and because then the administration says you're grouping up for gang activity, get write-ups, you know, there's a whole, there's a lot of reasons behind it. Um, but so there was two or three of us were there, then Gangster came over and, uh, and, and made it clear he wasn't going to do it. So I, out of frustration, in part, also because I'm not going to ask people to do things that I'm not willing to do myself. And also, to be honest, there was a bit of ego there. There was a bit of, I'm going to show you how to whack somebody. Right. Like you really think you're all that you really out here with a, with a target on your back in the sense of drawing attention. I prefer to be more discreet. I prefer to to just kind of hang out. Right. And, and yes, I have my role to fill. And yes, I was teaching and I'm grading essays and I was doing all this other stuff. But I'm no better than anybody else on the yard and nobody on the yard is any better than me. Right. It, it's a collective. It's a movement. And we pull each other up and and we all try to rise as high as, as we can, not in the food chain, just in who we are as individuals. That was my mindset. That's the way I was trained to be. Gangster operated differently, right? He'd have been a tyrant if anybody would listen to him, right? And so I said, fine, look, man, I'm not going to argue. Just give it to me, right? So I get the tomahawk and I get this guy, Johnny Garcia, right? Uh, who I think was from San Jose too. A little short dude. He was cool, man. He was a cool kid. I, I think his career took some turns uh, uh, out of Salinas, but another story. But he was a decent guy. I liked him. And so I said, Johnny, walk with me, man. He's down for whatever. Let's go. Right. So we walk around the track, and I said, look, I'm going to carve this dude up, okay? But if he doesn't come after us, if he doesn't come after myself or anybody else, let that dude go as long as he doesn't go by, by them, but we're clear on the other side of the yard from the South side and the white. So it, it, and I really planned on, on getting this dude, right? So I anticipated he's not going to go far, but I also didn't think he was going to rush over to the yard and get off. He, he just, that was my thought. And I didn't want to lose anybody that I didn't have to because our numbers were so low already. So I wasn't eager to just send people, send people, send people. If we can get away with slicing him and not losing anybody, that's preferable in my book, right? As long as it's done safely in terms of our standing as a group on the yard and our relationship with other group segments. I had a very good relationship with the Southsiders, with the Surenos uh, on that yard. Great. They got me a job in the kitchen. I was actually the only Norteño on the yard that, that had, a, a, you know, had a good job, right? Had a decent job, a job that you could plug your people and, and look out. Um, and the Sureños got me that job when, when I first got there. And, and that's a whole nother story, right? Maybe when I do my overall scenes video, but safe to say like gang recognized gang and, and not that I'm some big badass or, or, or that they were some, you know, it wasn't that it, it's just a respect level, right? We, we were professional and, and they were professional and, and, and we just had a lot of similarities, right? We just happened to be on different ends of the state. Um, but, but so there's respect there. Anyways. Again, we don't want to mess that up, right? And so I walk around the track. I walk up behind you. It's the easiest um, removal with a weapon that I've ever done. Um, because the dude is sitting with his legs crossed on a yard, staring off into nowhere, right? So, so I don't want to act like I took down an army of people and, and, and whatnot, right? Um, it's, I've never seen anybody get whacked sitting with their legs crossed on a yard before. So I walk up. 
uh, similar to the homeboy, I, I kind of grab his head and I'm just running all across, right? And I'll get his nose and I get his eyes and his lip and his head and his ear. And, and I'm just sitting there having a field day, right? Like, like a painter, but with this neck. And nobody's catching it. And I'm looking and the tower cops kind of over there watching. But also keep in mind, because of numbers and because of the legacy of Sureños on that yard um, and, and in Salinas Valley, period, the South Side has been giving COs, the blues, all throughout that prison for a long time. So they were generally the ones that, that the COs focused more on, right? Because their numbers were high and they were with the business, of course. And they came after COs, right? Um, and, and so I, I think they got more of the attention for those reasons, which in this incident played out uh, well, I guess you could say for, for me, not so well for, for the victim. So I get him, I get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. And then I go walking around to basically where I was when we had that argument, when Gangster and I had that argument, right? And Gangster's still over there. So I walk over there, there's three homeboys there. So I tell one of them, hey bro, can you take this for me? He's like, yeah. Like it's, and he's one of the level twos from the gym. He takes the razor, he, you know, the little tomahawk, he goes and disposes of it. And I stand there. By that time, Johnny's behind the dude like this. And the dude is up and he's walking, but he's, you know, he's not very stable. He keeps going like this as he's walking and you just see blood, right? And so the alarm goes off, right? And, um, and gangsters like, oh, bro, that's some bullshit you over there showing off. You just showing off, rascal. Like, ooh, I'm, I'm not showing off. The fool had to go. That's how you send them, right? To be told, there was a little bit of showing off, but it was directed towards him, right? It, it was not, oh, I want the whole world to look at me. It was a thing between him and I. Um, it, it's kind of hard to explain, but. And so, uh, so he's woofing, right? He's talking shit and he comes back and, and, um, and same thing, we don't stay on lockdown, right? We, we come out uh, the next day and because it's an internal one and it's a removal and it didn't involve, you know, opposing groups. So the SEALs didn't really care. And uh, so we come out and gangsters talking shit, right? And I got black dudes getting at me saying that gangsters talking shit. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Like you're venting to other group segments about our business, right? And that's when I start hearing. I mean, you know, gang, you know, he runs the yard. He this, he that, and I'm, and I'm not correcting them, right? I'm not. He doesn't run the yard. I do. That that'd be stupid and foolish. But I'm just taking it all in, and I'm watching his demeanor, and now there's some tension between him and I. I say, okay, I, I see where this is going. And he can't stay here, right? Um, but I can't, I'm, I don't feel comfortable making that executive decision. So I send word out. Look, this is what Gangster didn't do. This is what he said. This is what he did. This is again what he didn't do. I would like to send them back to you guys. What you think? The homeboys get back, send them, right? Cool. And I'll be honest, I was excited about this one. And, and again, I reiterate, man, that this is not to brag and boast. This is not to try to make myself look like a hardcore person or, or anything of the sort, because that's not the case, man. I was a kid in prison doing the best that I knew how. Um, I, I, I don't know if I'd say I was in over my head in that role, but it tested me. And, and it was stressful uh, because I wasn't completely confident in, in myself but somebody had to do it. And, and for whatever reason, it fell on me. And, and I really tried to do the best job that I could. Keeping in mind that I was also a, a prison gang member, right? And, and it's a violent environment. So it's not as if I can argue now that all my actions were righteous by society standards or righteous by even my own standards today. But by those standards that we all signed up to live up under at that time, I really tried to do the best I could. But I'm a human and I got feelings and, and I have some ego and, and some people I like and some people I don't. And, uh, and it just so happens in this case, I did not like Gangster. And he put himself in a position to face repercussions. I had the pleasure at that time, to be honest, of 
orchestrating that, right? Of, of deciding how that repercussion will be felt. Uh, somebody else said it was okay. I decided what it looked like. And there was a homeboy that had come from the yard, also from Salinas. I'm not going to say his name, um, but a good dude. A lot of people know him. Uh, he's not into the politics, although he's sharper than most people who are. He was short to the house. So when he came to the yard in Salinas, he got at me, right? And said, check this out, rascal. Uh, I'm short to the house. And so if you need somebody hit with a weapon, I'm your guy. I ain't got no problem with it. I've said whatever. Um, but I, I don't want to be in a role where I'm going to get caught. I, I need you to try to make sure that I make my date, right? Um, but, but with that said, I'm down for whatever, because Salinas Valley, and this was in the household policies, right? In Salinas Valley, in terms of Nortenos, you could not refuse an assignment. If you were told to remove somebody, you had to, you couldn't say no, right? Um, and, and so everybody knew that. And, and so this individual's response to that was, I'm all on board with it, but this is my preference. And, and as a leader on the yard, I, at that time, I really loved that, right? Because generally you run into objections with people not wanting to use weapons. I'll bomb on them after all this, all that, but I don't want to shed blood because I don't want to catch a case and da, da 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 So to have somebody come and be like, nah, fool, I'll whack whatever, was kind of refreshing, um, but also wasn't something that I was going to take advantage of. Homeboy was short to the house and I wanted him to go to the house. So his shoulder never got tapped until now because I also needed people that really knew what they was doing, right? Um, and so I get at him and I'm like, look, bro, I, you know, I'm gonna need your help. He asked me, hey, is it gangster? Tell me it's gangster. I said, I can't tell you right now, man, but I think you can tell by the look on my face and my reaction that it was. Um, and he'd been around and he didn't like gangster Stilo. And, and so he was like, yeah, man, count me in. And then uh, I got at somebody else and, and asked them if they was going to stab him. And they said, yes. I said, okay, cool. So after visits, they used to have this thing where like um, you could buy these ducats on, on, on certain occasions. And I like holidays or whatever, but just certain points of time, um, they would have these sales, right? Where like you get a slice of pizza, right? You, you pay in advance. Um, and, and you buy these ducats and you buy a slice of pizza or you buy a couple donuts or, or whatever. Items that are not normally available on canteen. It's not a canteen draw. It's hot food, ready to go right then. Um, and, and you can go buy it, but you pick it up by the canteen window, which in Salinas Valley is right by the gate that you go through to go to visiting. Gangster's on a visit. Uh, he got visits frequently. Uh, he had married a girl named Sandra, right? And we know that in part because he got the name Sandra in, in, in uh, uh, cursive letters, huge across his lower back, right? Like way, uh, I mean, huge letter, bigger than this, right? Just Sandra. <laughs> and so, um, and, and, and that's relevant in a second. So he always had visits. And, but we also knew that he had ducats to get this pizza, right? He fastened himself a baller, a hustler, all this other stuff, right? Um, and, and so, which was also kind of a demeanor that just in general sort of rubbed me wrong. And that's just my own personal preference and comes from how I grew up in a neighborhood being much more of a gang member than a hustler or a drug dealer, right? Uh, um, we were just little ghetto bastards, right? We weren't balling on rims and all that other stuff. And, um, you know, teach their own. And, and, and I don't encourage either, you know, being either way now, but so it probably didn't add to my, it probably did contribute to how I viewed him as well, right? Like just his whole little get down. And so uh, we had a setup where when he comes out from visit, there's a large group of people right there waiting to get their stuff. And he's going to go get in with that group. But of course, he's going to be on the outskirts of it. And our side of the yard was on that side of the yard, right? And so, uh, so he goes and he's waiting on his stuff and he's in his visiting clothes, right? He's creased up, he's sharp as a tack. And, and homeboy from Salas, right? He's a pretty tall dude, uh, 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 kind of dark-skinned guy and is standing in front of gangster like this and they're just talking, right? And homeboy from Sin has got the gift of gab, right? He's a character, um, fun guy. He's just a fun guy all the way around. And uh, so he's just sitting there BSing with them 
Duke comes up behind him, hits him twice in the back, right? Just right there, good shots, boom, boom. Uh, the dude from Salinas, I almost said his name, dude from Salinas, he didn't want a tomahawk, he just wanted a razor, right? Which is fine, I trust him to do his thing. He whacked more people than me probably over the years in prison, certainly over the years in prison. And so he just, boom, and waxed the heck out of out of uh, out of gangster, right? He hit him once. I think he might have hit him. Like he did. He hit him twice, right? Boom, boom, because they were right above each other, right? Two slices. Gangster kind of whoa. And then I had two youngsters from the gym that were level twos that were supposed to run up and bomb on him. Unfortunately for these youngsters, they apparently never jumped anybody in their life because what they did was one of them ran up while the other one kind of stood back. And Gangster had beaters, right? He he has some tippers. So he, bing, bing, and plus he's fighting for his life. He's paranoid. He's leaking. He's leaking. You know, your adrenaline is running, right? And, and to his credit, he didn't run off. He didn't scream out. He didn't try to get away. He got with the business. And so he tips up this youngster, and the youngster falls back, and the other one rushes. And he tips him up, and he falls back. And when I say youngster, mind you, we're all youngsters, right, at the time. We're all kids, man. And, and so... Uh, so those two get get the short end of the stick, right? Um, not severely, because Gangster was more in defense mode. But if you got within his reach, and he had decent, you know, arm length, right? Probably similar as mine. You get within his reach, he's gonna he's gonna fire on you. And so that you know, the yard goes down. They snatch him up. Uh, what I learned later is Gangster goes to AdSec, right? He goes to the hole. And in the hole, he files a report on me, right? Mind you, it's the people in the hole. It's the people in AdSec that said it was okay to do that. So now he's there complaining to them about what happened to him. And he writes a report on me. I don't know the details of it. But as is often the case, the fellas in the hole, and this was actually, this actually happened twice, but, but I'll stick to this for now. The homeboys in the hole were like, oh, yeah, man, you know, we've been hearing a lot of stuff about Rascal, whatever they said, to get Gangster comfortable to go out to the yard. So Gangster fights to get out to the yard. In Salinas Valley at the time, it was group yards. Uh, we didn't share yard with, with the Blacks or anybody else, but it was group North Daniel Yard. So he comes out to yard, and what happens? He gets whacked again while he's on the yard. And so he's just catching it every which way. Then his wife, Sandra, leaves him. Why does she leave him? Because her dad or her uncle or somebody was, at that time at least, an NF member. I, I don't know who, uh, uh, I think I did hear the name, but you're talking 20-some years ago, so I don't remember. But uh, her dad or her uncle or somebody was a Nuestra Familia member. And, and at that time, in good standing at least, I don't know if they still are because I don't know who it is. And so when she finds out that gangster's whacked and that gangster's deemed and his career is over, she leaves him because she says, look, while I'm not in the mix, man, my family is, and I can't be married to a, to somebody that's no good. And so he just lost it all, right? He, he lost his identity. Um, he lost his wife. He, he lost a lot in that situation. And why? Because he wanted to be seen as that guy. And as the saying goes, so you want to be a gangster, right? That, that was him. It, it's, he wanted to be a gangster. He wanted to be the guy. He, he wanted to have the spotlight on him, right? He, he wanted to be John Gotti, right? He didn't want to be like the old school mobsters that, that were a little bit more discreet. He wanted to be the flashy Teflon Don dude. That never lasts long, right? It never lasts long. And, and it's just, it's, it's a way of being that is going to push people away. And when you conduct yourself in a fashion, and this is in life in general, when you conduct yourself in a fashion where people are happier to see you walk out of a room than they are to see you walk in it, then you set yourself up for disaster, right? Because now people don't like you and you're not going to get the benefit of the doubt and you're going to get folks that are gunning for your position 
And, uh, you know, the, if, if you're the guy at work and they're just a dick, right? Then not only are you not going to build your team right, but there's going to be more a feeling of, man, I could do what you do. I could take your job. I could take your place. You're not all you think you are. Um, my brother Chino, man, was, was he, he's a little bit older and, 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 and not so eager to run around and punch people now, but remember we were younger. His biggest thing was taking off on bullies, taking off on people with brag. We'd be sitting around and somebody would come in and, oh yeah, man, I just did this and I just did that. And I, woo, 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 woo. and maybe there's some truth to what they were saying and maybe there's not, but he would get up and be like, okay, bro, I'm going to test that. Run it. Oh no, bro. I don't want to know what you wait. Hold on. But I thought you were all that. Right. And maybe they did act like they were all that in whatever situation outside the house that they were in. But would you run around, keep boasting and keep being that way? Somebody's going to test your gangster. Somebody's going to test your character. Somebody's going to test your attitude. So you set yourself up because nobody passes every test. Right. Nobody wins every fight. If you're getting in fight, if you won every fight you've been in, you haven't been in very many fights um, or you're a liar. So. There's always somebody bigger and badder than you. There's always somebody that's going to get the upper hand on you. And you are more likely to find that person faster if you conduct yourself in those childish ways. And some of the other lessons that, that I think are contained in here is prison will have you doing stuff, man, that as you get older and your values change, you regret. Um, I identify as a Christian. I, I don't really like American Christianity. I don't like mega churches. I, I don't like how politics and religion have been mixed. There's a lot of stuff I don't like, but I came to an understanding of the divine through reading scripture, right? And, and so for that reason, that has some value to me. And, and even if it would have been a Muslim person or a Buddhist person or a Hindu person or, or somebody that believed in, in multiple gods or whatever, I would feel bad about that today because I'm a person of faith. And the idea that I was on board with hurting a person of faith as to some degree a form of entertainment, right? If you think about it, um, I wanted to be entertained by gangster. And that ain't right, man. That's not right. I, I'm, it's not something I'm proud of. Um, you know, like I said, it's probably the removal that, that I was involved in that I regret the most. Um, but that environment will have you behaving in ways that really only make sense in that environment. And so unless you want to do the rest of your life in prison or you plan on doing the rest of your life in prison, um, be careful, right? It, of, of, of what you subscribe to, allow yourself to evolve, allow yourself to grow mentally right? Um, allow your priorities to change. Too many of us feel like since I've been in this lane so long, and even in the streets, man, I've been in the streets forever, and I'm not going to be somebody that, that walks away. But I support my kids. I support my lady. I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to do this, but I'm not walking away from the streets. Either you're lying to yourself, and you really have walked away from the streets, but you just don't want to admit it, or you're really not putting all that stuff first, right? Like, you can have love for the neighborhood. You can have love for your people. You can have love for where you're from without running around like a gangster, without running around like a gang member, without doing gang membership, right? Um, allow yourself to do that. Give yourself permission to grow, man. We're not teenagers anymore. Very few teenagers watch this YouTube channel or any other prisons on YouTube channel. So don't get it twisted. These viewers, like you guys are 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. We ain't kids no more. You know, and not that it was cool when we were kids, but regardless, we're not kids now. Don't stay stuck thinking like a kid uh, because one day you, you will come to regret it, right? Um, I was a kid then, but, but still, I think that lesson holds. And be careful what you commit to. Be mindful of your words. Um, these situations, every one of them, was based on words, with the exception of Casper getting whacked. I don't know what Casper did, but the Christian dude getting whacked, the kind of weirdo dude getting whacked, the uh, gangster getting whacked, 
all of that was based on words, right? Gangster said he would do something. Or the Christian dude said, hey, man, you know what? God loves you. Maybe you shouldn't be involved in this, which is a righteous thing to say by my standards today, but, but at the time didn't work. So his words got him in trouble and got him cut. Gangster's words also got that Christian cut, right? Then Gangster's words wind up getting him cut because he doesn't follow up with weirdo dude. Weirdo dude's response is, man, do something very, very bad. I don't know. You know, okay, bro, all that, you got to go. That's a wrap. And, and then Gangster goes because of a series of, of his words. Man, words are powerful. Words can free you. Words can imprison you. Words can bring you life. Words can bring your death. Um, so be careful, right? And, and being emotional, being passionate is not an excuse. It could be a reason. There's lots of reasons. But reasons and excuses are two different things. And there's no excuse for some of that stuff that happened, even though there's reasons. Anyways, help others move in excellence, man. That's what homies do. Help yourself at the same time because you're worth it. Hopefully there's some stuff in here that you can use both to better your life and maybe as you come in contact with young folks or young minded folks in your sphere of influence that you can kind of help them out. If you like this kind of content and, and I do a lot of other stuff, man, I do interviews, mental health, substance abuse, some history, some culture stuff. I got to rename some of my playlists because, you know, there's all sorts of things in there. Um, then tap in. You know, I'd love you to hit the like button, the subscribe button become a member, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but mostly I hope that this information is of value to you and that you make it of value to somebody else, man. You guys have a good day.